Hey, welcome to another digidemy.com tutorial. My name is Özgür. In today's lesson, we'll talk about how to organize an Illustrator file so we can then take it into After Effects and animate it. A logo reveal is one of the most common uses of After Effects. So let's learn how to do it properly. Let's have a look at how we can animate this logo from start to finish by using Illustrator and After Effects. Now, before we take this from here into After Effects, we actually need to do some tidying up first. Most of the times when you create illustrations or illustrations are given to you, you realize that everything happens in a single layer. So if I go to the Layers panel here, you see everything is inside this single layer. Which means if I was to take this document as it is from here into After Effects, After Effects wouldn't be able to understand how these individual elements, the icon, the text elements and the background, are built one by one. So in order for After Effects to understand how these elements are built, we need to go and separate them into individual layers in Illustrator first. So let's do that. Here I have this single layer. Inside the layer I have a group which includes everything off the logo and then the rectangle which is the background. Now if I want to animate them separately, like I said, I have to go and create individual layers for these. Now one thing you'll realize is I can't take these bottom level layers outside of this. So these sub layers or groups can't be dragged outside. In order for us to be able to drag these outside, we need to have another host layer. So that would be a top level layer. So if I go and create one, let's say we call this one background. I can now drag this rectangle into that background layer and that works. And I can now animate the background layer independently than the rest in After Effects. Of course, I want the background layer to be underneath. So I'm going to drag this here. And I now need to do the same thing for the other elements inside this group here. So if I open this up, you see I have this single path, that's this icon here. So let me just go and create another layer. And then call this one icon. And then drag this path in here. That's that one done. And now instead of doing the rest of these one by one, what I could do, you see here I have two groups, so that's the bottom word, media, this is Docklands. What I could do, let's say for example I want to break this up, so all of these individual elements will be their own layers. Well, instead of kind of dragging them manually one by one, I could select the top level group here and then click on the three lines here and then come down to where it says release to layers sequence. And that turns those groups or the sub layers into top level layers, which I can now drag out. So if I select them, I can now drag them out like that. And now I have those individual layers there. I'll do the same thing for this group, which is the word Docklands here. So I'll select that layer, go to this menu here and then Release to Layers Sequence. Now I can take these out, like that. Now I'm left with this empty layer here, so I can just go and delete that. Right now we have the individual layers separated, so I'm going to go and rename them. Let's see which one that is. So that's D, O, C, so it's going in that order, so that's Docklands. Let me go and rename them to be Docklands, like that. And this is the word media, so I'll just go and type in M E D I A. So I have all those individual layers labeled as well now. And now I can go and save it. And switch over to After Effects. And then import that file as a composition retaining the layer sizes. And I'll open this up. And here I have all those layers. Now, because I didn't kill the bleed in Illustrator, so this is the bleed area in Illustrator, as you can see, that's being taken into account when it comes to creating the composition in After Effects as well. So let me just go and resize this composition. I'll make this 1920 by 1080, so that's full HD. And that should then resize this properly. There we go. The only other problem I have is the order of these layers. Now, I want to be able to swap these around so that the letters that make the word Docklands will be above the letters that make the word Media. And there's a really neat trick for that in After Effects. Instead of kind of manually dragging these layers one by one, so D goes up, then O, and then C, instead of doing that one by one, let me undo that a couple of times, you can select the layers in the order you want them to appear. For example, let's say I want the icon to be the first one, and then I hold down the command key, and then select D, O, C, K. So I'm selecting them in the order I want them to appear in. 
like that. Then the background. And if I now cut these layers by pressing Command X or by going to Edit, Cut. And then if I paste them, Command V or Edit, Paste. It will remember the order in which I've selected these layers. And it will paste them in here in that exact order. So here, as you can see, I have the icon first, then D, O, C, K, L. So it's the same order that I've selected them in. Because I have multiple Ds and multiple As, it puts these numbers next to them, which is fine. But if that's bothering you, you can just select the layer, press return, and delete those numbers. There we go. So let's talk about the animation we want to create now. Now what I want to happen is for this icon to scale up in the center, and then once it scales up, it will then slide towards left. And as that slides towards left, these letters will be sliding in the opposite direction towards right, and they'll be revealed as if they're coming from behind this icon here. So first of all, let's go and animate the icon. So I'll solo it, so that's all I'm seeing. And I'll press P to reveal its position. And also Shift S to see scale as well. So I'm going to go and lock these in place, like that, by adding keyframes. And then I'll actually push these keyframes out the way, let's say to 12 frames, so half a second, since this composition is 24 frames a second. And the reason why I do this is so that I don't lose this final position and scale. Otherwise, if I undo this, and if I put this here, and then animate this here, then I wouldn't know how far to the left it should go once the animation is completed. So I'm going to undo that and add the keyframes here. Push the two out the way to 12 frames. And for now, I'll just be interested in the scale. So I want this to start at 0%. And then when it plays, this is what's going to happen. I'll select the two keyframes, and then press F9 to turn these into Easy Ease keyframes. This is what that's going to look like. And we can now make this a bit more lively by going to the graph. Here's the speed graph. I can select that. Push this to about here. Let's say maybe 70%. And then this goes to about 70% as well. If I now go back and play, this is what I have now. That's looking not too bad. And once this scales up, I also want that to go from the center to where it currently is. So I'll come out of the graph. I'll take this position keyframe. I'll actually push this to one second. And then here on the 12th frame, I want this layer to be in the center of the composition. So the quickest way of doing that would be to use the align panel here. I can just go and click on this align horizontally button. And that goes to the dead center now. And of course, because I had the keyframes enabled, that creates a keyframe here as well. So now it scales up and then moves towards left. Let's turn these keyframes into Easy Ease keyframes. So I'll select them and F9. And then I'll go into the graph here as well. And then maybe set these curves to be about 70%. Here. So if I come out of the graph now, this is what that's going to look like. So it scales up and then moves to the left. I think we could do with a tiny bit of a pause between the scaling animation and the position animation. So maybe I can take these two keyframes off to the right by, let's say, three frames or so. And let's see what that looks like. I think that looks better. Now, as this layer is moving towards left, like it does now, I want these letters to be revealed. So first of all, what I'll do is to go and animate these letters as well. So I'll unsolo this. And I'll go to the point when the icon starts moving here. I'll then select all the other layers and then press P for position. I'll keyframe them, but then I want these keyframes to line up with this keyframe here. Because by the time the icon moves to the left, these letters will have moved to the right. And now I have to specify where they'll start from. Well, I'm gonna get them to start from, let's say, here. So they all start there, and then one by one, they move in place. Now, of course, I want these keyframes to have some ease as well. So I'll select them all. And I'll press F9. Now, instead of updating the graph one by one, what I could do is to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and then double click on one of these keyframes. And that will bring up what's called the keyframe velocity dialog box. And that's going to allow us to add the influence. And the influence is the graph's curvature in, if I come out of this, the curvature of this graph is controlled with the influence values here. So as I select this, push this towards right, 
this curve here is the influence. But you see here, only one graph is being affected. But I want all of these to be affected. So I'll undo this, come out of the graph, select all these keyframes again, Alt, double click on one of them. And I can set this to, let's say, 70% on the incoming velocity. The incoming velocity is the left hand side of the graph, and the outgoing velocity is the right hand side of the graph. So I'll set both to be 70%. If I now go back into the graph, you see all of these keyframes have been updated by the same amount. So if I come out and then play again, this is what we have. So far, so good. But what I want to do now is to get the letters at the beginning to be invisible and only get revealed on the right-hand side of this icon. So as soon as they cross to the right side of the icon here, they'll get revealed. Now, although there are a couple of different ways of doing this, I want to show you how to do this with a track mat. So what I'm going to do is to go to a frame where the icon is kind of clear, let's say here. And then I'm going to draw a shape that's quite similar on the right hand side to the icon. And then maybe more of a rectangle on the left hand side. The reason why is if I go back now, is I want that shape. So imagine there's going to be a shape that goes like that, and then all the way to the left, and then down and right, and then curves again. And then that shape will be used as the mask for these letters. That's what I mean by a track mat. So let's do that. I'm going to come out of this, get my shape tool, let's say the ellipse tool to start with. And I can click and draw a circle holding down the shift key. And as I do this, if I hold down space bar, I can reposition this as well. So I'm trying to get this to be the same size as the green icon behind. Let's say maybe here, especially the right hand side of this is important because that's where the letters are going to be revealed from. And then let me zoom in to see what that looks like. I can then make the outline invisible by clicking on this button. And now that looks like it's covering the shape behind it. If not, you could just use the arrows on the keyboard to nudge this in place, like that. And now that that's done, I'm gonna draw another shape, a rectangle to go from here, all the way to here, and then down and right. So I'll get my pen tool, maybe click here, and then here, down, right, and up. So all of those letters are covered now. And now what I'm going to do is to use this shape as a track mat for all these individual letters. Now the quickest way of doing that would be to first go and pre-comp these letters. So let me first go and press Command A to select everything. And then Command tilde, so I don't see any of the individual elements. And then I have to take these letters and pre-comp them. So I can treat them as a single element, which will then be masked by this shape. So I can select that letter D. And then all the way down to A with the Shift key. Then I can pre-comp them by pressing Command Shift C or right click, pre-compose, and now I'll call this Docklands Media. Hit OK. And I'll have to put the shape now just above Docklands Media. And then I'll go to toggle switches and modes at the bottom. And now I can go to the track mat of Docklands Media. And it will give me four options. Well, really, it's two options. It's either alpha mat or luma mat, or you can invert them. But I'm going to use alpha mat now to start with, and I'll show you what this does, and then I'll show you why we'll need to change it. So what alpha mat does is it looks at where this red element is visible, and only there the text becomes visible as well. So if I go and turn this alpha mat on, you see, wherever the shape was, that's where you see the text. If the text is actually outside the shape, like it will be in just a second here, you see, that's going to be invisible, which is not what we want. So we want the exact opposite of this. So I'll go to alpha mat, and then change it to alpha inverted mat. So initially, the text is invisible, and only when it leaves this area, it becomes visible like this. So the shape that we drew is now being used as a mask for this pre-comp. But the problem, of course, is that the icon is moving, but the shape isn't. Well, that's a really easy fix. Let me go to the frame where that icon was inside that circle, maybe here. And at this point, I can now go and link the shape to the icon as a child. So if I go to this pick whip here of the shape, I can parent it to the icon. So that as the icon moves, the shape will move with it, like this. And now you see the text will be revealed as it leaves the shape. Like that. Let's play that in real time and see what that looks like. Let's go right to the beginning. 
Now, the other problem, of course, is because we've parented the shape to the icon, the shape actually scales down as well, because the icon starts at 0% at the beginning. And because the shape is small, the text is revealed. So if I go to the frame where the shape is in the right place and the text is completely invisible, I can then just select this pre-comp of the text and then get it to start at this point. The quickest way to do this is to press Alt and left square bracket. Or, of course, we could just click and manually drag this here as well, like that. What I've just done is to make the layer invisible before this point. So if I go back, you see no text is going to be visible until this point. And on this frame here, the text becomes active, but it's still invisible because it's now being masked by this shape. So if I go back, here's the animation we have now. And to jazz this up a little more, I can go into this pre-comp and then stagger these layers. Let's say, for example, I want the letter A to come in first, then I, then D, and so on. So I can actually start staggering them. So here's A, I'll leave this as it is. I'll push this second layer to the right by, let's say, one frame, and then this one by two frames, three frames, and so on. So I'm going to stagger these layers like this. So they're always one frame apart. There are some scripts we can use for this kind of work as well, which I won't get into now. But if I go back to my main comp and play it now, this is what that's going to look like. You see, there's a bit of a kind of stretching animation here. So they don't all move at the same time. One more thing I've just realized is that the shape and this green icon don't line up perfectly. Do you see if I zoom in? There's a bit of a gap between the letters and the shape. Well, that's an easy fix. I can select the shape and then just use the arrows on the keyboard to reposition it like that. Then zoom back out and then go back and play. And this is what we should have now. Now you can create any kind of variation on this. Let's say, for example, if I go back and play this once again, you see these will start moving towards right like that. But then the letters that make the word Docklands take their time to kind of start moving. You see here, if I go back, almost the entire word media is revealed before the word Docklands slides in. Now I can go back into this pre-comp, take the letters from S to D, so from S to D, and then drag them towards left as well. So there's a bit of an overlap between those as well. So here's the animation for that. And now if I go back to this main composition, if I play, now the delay is shorter between the words media and Docklands as they are revealed. Finally, let's go ahead and turn the motion blur on as well. Go back to switches. I'll turn the motion blur on for the icon, also for this pre-comp. And you see the icon is going to have the motion blur, but the pre-comp won't. So these letters that make the words Docklands media, they won't be blurry. That's because inside this pre-comp, these individual layers don't have the motion blur switch turned on. So I'm going to go in here to switches and then turn these on as well. Then when I switch back, they'll be blurry here as well. So let me go back and play. This is the animation we have now. And that's how you can create a simple yet effective logo reveal by using Illustrator and After Effects. Before you go, if you want to win a free live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a five-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.